Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the tone curve in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Tone curve. Ooh, curvy. Curvy. That's my 70s curvy little dance there. So the tone curve is very similar to the tone curve that you would find inside Lightroom, but in Photoshop it's actually more powerful because you can add it to layers. So let's jump into Photoshop and let me show you how to do this. So here we are inside Photoshop. We're going to be using this photo that I took a few years ago over in Paris, France. And so essentially the tone curve can be found here in the adjustment layers panel. So it's just up here, tone curves. Now you can also get to this by clicking on this little button down here and you can bring in curves there. And the other way that you can do it is image and you can go adjust, oh, make sure that you've got it selected, the layer, image, adjustments and curves. Again, I wouldn't do that because that's going to edit the actual layer and what you actually want it to do is to put a um, add a layer above adjustment layer. So for example, you hit curves and it's going to bring up a new adjustment layer above the one that you had selected. And it opens up this panel just here. Now, loads of options inside this, as you can see, and it's kind of similar to the levels, but it works slightly differently and actually is a lot more powerful. So here we are, this is what we actually have just here. Now when you first click on it, you will have this selected here, or make sure that you do, which is kind of a zigzag, which is your point, you can add points to the curve. So you've got to slide along the bottom. This just like inside levels is setting your black point here and setting your white point just here. Really simple, if you move it across, anything left of this is going to be pure black and move this across here anything right of this is going to be pure white. Now, you can also change your colors up here. So let's go into red. Anything to the left of this will be 0% red or cyan or 100% cyan. And the, this one here, anything right of this will be 100% red. Great. So let's just, that was a quick explanation there. But actually it's a lot more powerful than this little slider. I wouldn't actually use this very much. This is why. You can put unlimited points on this just here. So for example, you can change your black point just like we could do inside levels. So you could make it, so rather than blacks being black, you could make them be a gray color. And rather than whites be white, you could make them be a gray color, reducing contrast like so, and boosting contrast on the opposite axis like so. Really powerful. But how about this? If you wanted to boost contrast, this is what you can do inside the tone curve. You can click anywhere on this line and you can add a new point. So now this is your midpoint and you can move this up to make it lighter and you can move it down to make it darker. But actually, I can move this anywhere that I want within this. So let's set it back to the middle and I can actually add multiple points to this. So if I set select three, the most times you're going to be using this would be adding three points. You drop this one down here and lift this up here. Essentially, you're boosting the contrast, but you're keeping the whites pure white and the blacks pure black. So now let's look at the before and the after down here. See, added contrast just by adding these points. Really quite amazing. But remember, you can add as many points to this and you can get as wacky as you want with this by moving it around. So definitely have a practice with this. But what happens if you have too many points? Well, you can just drag a point off the side, pick it up like so, and drag it off and it will just get rid of the point completely, which means you can essentially reset it. Now, if you have done something completely wacky and you're like, oh, I don't really know what to do with this, there's a reset button down here and that will reset this. So what, so that's essentially what this does, but how about all these other elements here? Well, just like inside levels, this is to set your black point. So we'll choose something black. So we select it and we choose something black. But remember, it works with all three RGB. So you can see now we have different RGB things that have popped in there. And I can select my lights. So let's select over here. 
So you can see it's added in all of these other lines now. And then I can select my midpoint. Again, you'd need pure gray for this to work because now we've got all of these different funky lines going on. It didn't really work, but if you've used a gray card, this is perfect to use. Or you can just get creative to set your white balance with this, for example. You could just go in and, and get really creative and start doing wacky things like that. Let's reset that by clicking the button. And let's see what else we have within this. So essentially, these are your droppers, but this tool up here is the most powerful thing ever, ever, ever. That's because you can click on this, and now wherever I move on an image, watch the line over here as I move into my shadows, you're gonna see a little, a little blodge in the dark area, the lower end of the line, or my highlights is gonna jump up to that end. And that means that I can add in points. So on the sky, if I was to click, then drag up, and I'm doing it on the image itself, I'm now lifting the tone curve in that area, and I could select my shadows, and I could bring this down in this area. Now, this is what's important with this hand finger thing. It doesn't, it does all RGB at the same time. So it does only this channel here, which means that you're not gonna get all sorts of different wacky colors, which is really, really great. And you can literally go through and add as many points as you want to this. But what I would recommend is don't keep adding loads of points to a tone curve, because you're gonna get into a mess. And what happens is, as you were to start moving things, can you see now I've got multiple points on here, it actually becomes kind of dangerous. Let me find another one up here. So now you can see I've ended up with too many points, so it's got this really weird effect. If I was to drag one of those points off and now give it a smooth tone curve, now what it means is it's going to be a little bit nicer and it's going to have a greater effect. Now, let's reset this again. The next thing down that you have here is the pen tool. Now what this means is you can literally draw a tone curve on this, however you want to do it. Now, be really careful with this, because for example, if you were to set a nice contrast curve like this, it's known as the S curve, then you would take this and go, oh, well, I wanna boost up this section here. Can you see what it's done here is the line is no longer connected. It can jump in a pure line there, so it doesn't actually have these points. So I'd always recommend using the points and making it go nice and smooth. Now, let's reset again. So we can add loads of different points on here and we can do this. Now, if we were to select, so for example, let's come out of this, we're using the pen tool. And if we were to go, well, I wanna make like an S curve like this, but I can use this arrow thing here and it's kind of smooth that out for me. What it's gonna do is it is gonna connect those lines for me and make it a little bit smoother. So that can definitely be helpful, but just be wary to use that too much. Okay, let's reset that. Now, the last few things that I do want to show you within this is, it comes with a number of presets built in, but they're very basic, but they're great to look at to see the shape of the curve, to see the effect that it actually has. Um, let's hit reset. There's also an auto button that analyzes your your histogram and then figures out what it can do to get the best exposure. Now, one other thing to point out here is that by boosting something here, okay, it does it in the entire image. So I might be looking at those tones. I'm not looking at the color blue. I'm looking at where it is in my RGB tone curve. So my kind of my highlights, but not my whites. And then this is kind of my shadows, but nothing to do with the color blue. It's what you've got to imagine is it's actually doing it as if it's in grayscale. So I've just hit grayscale up here, black and white, so I can show you this. So now I can see that these are my darks, and these are my light grays, and these are my light, light grays, and they all fit within this. So by using black and white can really help you to analyze an image while you're getting used to these things. Now, another thing just to point out within this, which is really, really great, is you have your different channels so you can get really creative. So for example, you can take the red and you can go, well, I'm gonna boost the reds in my shadows and I'm gonna go to blues and I'm gonna reduce the blues in my shadows. So now I've got this crazy effect. It actually looks really nice. And so that's how you can get incredibly creative 
really quickly within um, the tone curve. So now let's we're in here, let's do a quick edit and let's, oh, in fact, what I wanna show you is this. I'm gonna use this again to explain how this works. So I'm gonna move the tone curve above it and we can see exactly. Just like we did in the levels, I can move my black points so everything left of this is black and I can move my white points so everything right of this is white. So you can see, this is essentially percentage of, of, of gray, which is in there, 0% and 100% of the color white. 50% gray. So then I can add things in my tone curve and you can see as I'm moving this round, because I'm say reducing my contrast, it's all gone gray. Whereas if I was to do what we did a second ago and boost my contrast, you can see that it's now boosted the contrast. If I turn it off, turn it on. The blacks got blacker, the whites get whiter. Can you see that? So that really is how it works. But now let's use this to have a look at how it works inside the color spectrum. So now let's take the reds and I'm just gonna add reds to my shadows. Now look down here. Now let's go really extreme so you can see. I'm adding reds to my shadows. And then what if I was to go for blue, look at my highlights up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add blue into my highlights. So now I've got reds down here and blues down here. If I turn this off, it's now gonna do the same thing to this image. So you can really see by using this palette exactly how the tone curve works and what it does. So definitely spend a bit of time working with this and discovering what it does. Okay, so let's use this to do a quick edit now on this image. So what I would do for this, just so that I show you, is I'm gonna boost the contrast a little tiny bit, but I wanna create a filmic look actually. So I'm gonna really crush all my shadows like so. So this is very old school and filmic. Okay, and then what I am gonna do is I'm actually going to um, add blues to my shadows, like so, and I'm going to add reds to my highlights, just a little bit, like so. In fact, I'm just gonna do it more like this. Not too much down there, really gone too far. Okay, and that's now kind of a bit of a sinner Mat um, sorry, a bit of a filmic look with this image. It's not perfect, I may not do this, but I wanted to show you some elements that you may want to do with inside the curves panel. So you can see that the tone curve in light in Photoshop is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So definitely take some time to learn it. Now, if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to the video. And remember, if you want to practice on these images and use that color palette, you can download all of these over on photosincolor.com. The link is in the description. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.